That's the moment to stop. That's the moment to look up the grammatical point. Hi, is it important to learn all the grammar and the vocabulary first when you learn a language and then start speaking? Or is there a better way to learn a language, a better way to learn English? How did you start learning English? This is Susan Broder from Speak Languages and Travel the World, here to help you improve your English with minimum effort and maximum benefits. Now, today I'd like to talk to you about the importance of learning English grammar and vocabulary in context. This is really for learning any language. Most people traditionally start learning a language with a textbook where you start learning the grammar from the beginning and then you progress in difficulty until you reach the so-called end. In reality, there isn't an end because you never stop learning. But let's say that you can say you've spanned all the grammar and that you know your grammar. So uh, that's the traditional way of learning it and I imagine that most of you also started learning your foreign languages in this way. But is this really the best way to learn a language? Think back, think of children. Children don't know the grammar when they're learning a language. They just imitate their parents and as they're imitating their parents, their parents will gradually correct them. So actually, they're not learning, you know, the simple present, the present perfect, the simple past and so on. They're just picking up the language as they're going along. They're learning the language in context. And that's why I'd like to explain to you the importance of not starting from the beginning and learning all the grammar traditionally. Most people I know who followed that route, they learned for years and years and never really picked up the language or they knew their grammar perfectly, but couldn't then take the step to speaking. And very often they had problems understanding. So uh, in my opinion, that is not the correct way to go about learning a language. But the correct way is to do it the way children do it. Learn it in context. Now you'll ask me, why shouldn't you learn the grammar first? Well, I'm also speaking from experience. Out of necessity, I found myself having to learn Spanish. It was unexpected, it was necessary. And therefore, I didn't have time to study it. I picked up some cassettes from my sister-in-law, put them into the car. In those days, we had audio cassettes, no digital materials. And I didn't even have time to look at the uh, texts. I didn't borrow the actual books. I just borrowed the cassettes. And as a language teacher, I tried to deduce uh, what I was learning and in which order I was learning it. I already knew Italian and there's not such a huge difference between Italian and Spanish. So I sort of understood which way the cassettes were leading me and I started to pick up Spanish gradually. I was self-taught, very basic uh, Spanish at the beginning. Then I picked up some of my grandmother's old Spanish books and started learning Spanish from her books. Uh, nobody corrected it. And so I had really no way of knowing whether what I was learning was correct but I felt I was making progress. I was confident that I could communicate sufficiently and so the few times I initially went to Spain on this minimal knowledge, I realized I could communicate and I could understand quite well. So I was really proud of myself, but I really didn't know the grammar very well and I just threw myself out there. I allowed myself to say anything stupid. It didn't really matter because I didn't know exactly what was right and what was wrong. So um, I was just happy when I could communicate and when people could understand me. And so that made me joyful and I was able to communicate. I was fully aware I was making mistakes and that wasn't a problem because I communicated my ideas, I solved my problems and that was the most important thing. Now, what happened later on? Uh, later on, I started learning it a bit more seriously. 
uh, I started uh, following courses, I started becoming more conscious of grammar structures. Meanwhile, my daughter started studying at school as well. Now, she had much more time than me and she was doing it more intensively. And a couple of years later, I realized that her Spanish was way above my level. She had such an excellent pronunciation and suddenly I started feeling shy and I didn't dare speak Spanish in front of her when we went out together because her Spanish was so amazingly close to native Spanish whilst mine was just so foreign. I really felt embarrassed and I started feeling blocked. This is exactly what happens. The more grammar you learn, the more conscious you become of your mistakes, the more you will not dare to open your mouth because you know you're saying something stupid, something wrong. And this is one of the reasons one shouldn't start with intensive grammar. I'm not saying one shouldn't know any grammar, one shouldn't learn grammar, but one shouldn't start with the traditional method, let's learn all the grammar from beginning to end and then start speaking. No, because you won't start speaking because you'll be so conscious of what your mistakes are that you'll be embarrassed and you won't dare and you'll feel judged. So you must uh, allow yourself to experiment and knowing too much has exactly the opposite effect. It blocks you and that's what we have to avoid. Now babies, they'll blatter with their mouths, they'll experiment and it'll be funny and we all laugh when it sounds funny and that's not, not a problem. But as soon as we become more conscious, we'll be embarrassed. So the first step is to learn a grammar as you go along and learn it in context. Also, because learning only grammar is terribly boring, you'll lose the motivation to learn the language before you've ever started. That would be really a pity because language learning has so much more to it than just learning the language. You manage to get behind the scenes and get to know the people better when you learn their language. So language learning is not just communication, but picking up the nuances of local life. So how can you easily learn English or another language in context? Well, the two best methods are reading and listening. Reading and listening, both of them, will give you exposure to the sentence patterns, to the sentence structure, and you'll pick it up naturally. You'll pick up the grammar naturally as well, and the vocabulary. Now, you'll expose yourself to so much that after a while, everything will fall into place because you'll hear these sentence patterns repeated quite regularly in different contexts and this will make it just sound right and you'll be able to learn chunks and then reproduce these chunks. So it's really, really important to expose yourself to a lot of language. Probably at the beginning, the best is to take audiobooks because you can read but also listen at the same time, which is particularly important to make sure you get your pronunciation right from the beginning and don't find a word like looked and read it looked because you'll be picking up wrong pronunciation. But if you hear the reader in the audiobook say looked, you can then learn looked. And when you read it many, many times and you see looked, 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 and you hear looked, 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 you'll know that you have to pronounce it in that way. So this is very important for sentence structure, grammatical structure, uh, sentence patterns and vocabulary, also for phrasal verbs, for idioms, collocations, fixed phrases, all these will be learnt just from uh, reading and listening at the same time. So gradually your brain will get used to it and it'll be quite natural and you'll pick up the grammar naturally. On top of that, when I read something with a student, uh, they'll query it. They'll say, well, why do you say it in this way? That's the moment to stop. That's the moment to look up the grammatical point and find out why on earth they said it in a particular way or they used this particular tense. 
that's where you check it you read it up you find out why you can then do a few uh, exercises there are lots of exercises in grammar books with the key or online and you can practice that grammar point but it'll make much more sense to you if you practice that grammar point in that uh, context rather than just uh, blindly doing all the grammar from A to Z which is boring and really makes no sense. Reading and listening to audiobooks or subsequently interviews and podcasts these will all teach you the grammar naturally and you won't have to think of the rule when you're talking uh, that the frequency adverb goes before the verb after the verb to be that's something that you learn uh, automatically in a grammar book but you'll just pick it up naturally because you'll have heard it so many times you won't need to learn that the present continuous is also used for the future um, in certain situations when you or when you've already planned something because you'll notice from the context and you'll just pick it up naturally. I'm playing tennis tomorrow at four will just sound natural to you. You won't need to study that the simple present is uh, used instead of the future for timetables, for example. The train leaves at four o'clock. It'll sound natural. By reading and listening a lot, you'll know that if in the distance you see some black clouds, you'll just have to say, it's going to rain, and that won't be uh, going to meaning the future intention, but it'll be just something that is obvious to you. In a few minutes, it's going to rain, and you'll have picked it up again naturally. You'll know that shall is only used for offering, such as if you've drunk too much wine, I'll offer to drive. Shall I drive? You'll automatically pick up that uh, the present perfect is used with certain signal words such as ever, never, uh, whilst uh, the simple past is used with other signal words such as yesterday or ago. It'll be all naturally picked up from the context that you're reading. You'll pick up all this grammar and consequently also vocabulary just from this constant exposure. So I really recommend that when one starts learning a language, you try and expose yourself as much as possible to the language through audio, through video, through reading, and maybe also songs because listening and reading to sentence patterns a thousand times will just make them sound natural to you and you'll be able to express yourself without feeling blocked about the grammar. Uh, I have students who will speak to me and they'll stop mid-sentence and say, ah yes, that's the continuous tense. But you don't do that with your own language, so why should you do it with a foreign language? You just speak, you don't think about the grammatical structures of your own language whilst you're speaking, it just flows out naturally. And that's something that we have to create or recreate with the foreign language you're learning. On top of it, you'll be able to pick up a lot of fixed expressions from these dialogues, these uh, audio books that you're reading. For example, on the other hand, all of a sudden, he's a pain in the neck. These are all fixed expressions that you would pick up naturally from texts that you're reading or hearing. You'll also pick up collocations such as uh, it's a golden opportunity or fast food. You know that fast food is a natural collocation and you won't say quick food or you'll say I'm going to have a quick shower you won't say I'm going to have a fast shower so that's the problem with learning vocabulary individually it's no point learning the adjective fast and then the noun shower and saying I'm going to have a fast shower putting them together because we don't say that we say I'm going to have a quick shower and that's why when you expose yourself to natural language, you'll pick it up naturally without even needing to study the individual words because you'll just uh, learn the chunk altogether. You'll also pick up phrasal verbs uh, such as hold on, meaning wait a moment, or let's zoom in, meaning let's focus on this, or watch out, which means be careful. 
These are all expressions that you'll learn naturally without having to memorize them. Also because memorizing means you have to recall them from deep in the back of your memory and also many people will translate you'll avoid having to translate you'll not have to dig around in your brain so much from your native language to the translation in the language you're studying probably English in this case um, you'll just have it come out naturally if you're walking along the road and you see a car coming too close to a bicycle you can tell the bike rider watch out and you won't have to think okay so in my language you say it like this therefore I have to translate it by that time they've knocked the poor guy off his bicycle it has to come out naturally so what can you do to help yourself learn the language in context uh, I would say that the most important thing is to choose something which really, really interests you. It could not necessarily be a book. It could also be a recipe if you're into cooking. Why not choose a recipe? Uh, maybe also with a video explanation so you can hear the pronunciation, which is important. Or if you, you're into exercise, why not uh, watch a video that uh, teaches you the exercise routine that you're interested in? You have to pick up something that really, really interests you. There are magazines. You can pick up magazines at news agents or even read magazine articles on issue, iwsuu.org, and they're free. They're wonderful, glossy magazines, and you can read the occasional article on lifestyle, fashion, um, travel, uh, there are various articles and you can read those. So find something that really, really interests you. That's the first thing. When you're reading it, make a note of the phrasal verb, the collocation, the expression that you find interesting. And then, I'd like to teach you something particular, there is a very nice website called playphrase.me. You can take the expression, for example, carry on to mean continue, and you can put this expression, type it in to play phrase me, and it'll give you a lot of um, film clips which uh, pronounce this expression that you've written down. And you'll have American, Australian, all the different accents, faster, slower, female, male, and in each sentence they'll pronounce it so you can hear it read it so you'll get used to this expression but you can also stop it and repeat it with the same uh, flowing intonation and then if i were you i would also copy a couple of sentences that interest you and make a note of them so that you can repeat them on your own. So this is a way of intensifying the exposure to the particular expression that you're interested in. And if you hear it in 25 different film clips, you'll really start fixing it into your mind and you'll get used to all the different pronunciations as well. It's very good also for your listening comprehension if you get used to doing this because um, there's a lot of connected speech in these film clips too. So I would then transpose the four or five sentences that you've decided you like uh, to learn uh, with the, the expression you typed in, for example, carry on studying, carry on cooking, uh, let's carry on to the next destination and so on. And then put that on your dashboard in the car or on the mirror in the bathroom. Before you hop into the shower, look at them and then repeat them to yourself out loud in the shower. So again, you're fixing them by repeating them. So they shouldn't be too long, actually, because you do have to remember them. And these are all strategies to fix the expressions in your mind. Because in fact, the final thing is to make sure that you uh, are able to say these things. So speak, 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 practice, 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 saying the expressions that you've learned that you want to memorize. How about writing in the comments below the books, videos, podcasts, uh, music, 
like uh, um, magazines, anything that you're particularly interested in, write them down in the comments below because it might be interesting to share your various resources with others who might find them useful for their own language learning. And I'll be very interested in reading what you write. Um, I'll see if I can put a few links for you, for you in, in the description below so that you can make use of them to improve your English. So the main reason for not learning grammar first but in context is to help you communicate, help you learn the language as quickly as possible, uh, the most naturally possible, rather than uh, forcing yourself to learn everything grammatical first and then feeling totally blocked in panic because you know you're going to make mistakes and that's part of learning. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload my next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that's all for today. Bye!